with storm tactics. I'm sure she's not the only one. Yeah. Um, I suppose she's talking about after the panic and hysteria and clears and tears and tearing of hair and <laughs> sacrifices to the gods. Um, like rip sails and jammed roller furlings. Yeah. I, it's been, it's rare in our experience that weather sneaks up on you. It's indeed extremely... You can usually see it coming. <laughs> you can usually see it coming <laughs> If you're paying attention. <laughs> and if yeah. you look off at the horizon and say, gee, I think we're going to have to reef, it's time to reef. No. If right now, all hands... On deck. On deck. To reef. To reef sails. Yeah. And that's all there is to it. The, min the instant anybody thinks it might be time to reef, we reef. We reef. We don't argue about we it. We don't. Well, we learned that the hard way. We that learned was it the our, hard way. That was our first passage where we learned we always reduce sail at night. Always reduce sail at night uh, to slow the boat down because you can't see as much, and there's so much junk floating out in the Pacific right now. You can't afford to go too fast through it. But another thing is, if the wind picks up, you can usually uh, manage with the reduced sail that we and set. And you can't see that at night. And you the can't see the wind coming. In. You can hear it coming. Well, you can't see the clouds moving in yeah. and getting It's much darker. more difficult yeah. to detect than it is in the daytime. So again, it doesn't usually hit you that fast, but it can. Um, well, you remember in Hawaii when we were hove to that one, that one of our first yeah, got knocked down. passage? We were hove to and got knocked down, but I heard that coming. Yeah. I called you. I, mm -hmm. You were down below sleeping. Just as I came out through the <laughs> companionway. <laughs> Wham! <laughs> And that was a memorable moment. Yeah, so. that was a memorable day. <laughs> <laughs> one of one of one of our earliest. One of our earliest. Yeah, in the. Uh, Remember the uh, picture that we the had with the handle. Yeah, yeah. Still in the nicely tight. Yeah. That's all fun and games, but she wanted to know what we do. You know what our storm tactics are. First Just, tactic is to not have enough sail up to have to really be worried. Yeah, especially at night when you can't, can't have as much warning. Because I think most of the issues that people have is they just have slow too much down. Sail up. Just slow down. If you're in that much of a hurry, buy an airplane ticket and fly there. <laughs> Sailing for crying out loud. It doesn't make any difference. Slow down at night. Bad weather can be unavoidable. So you know, especially if you're crossing oceans. So, uh, and we've run into you know our fair share of it. Not that much, but enough. Enough. More than valuable. I would have, more than I would have liked. <laughs> I had to waves bigger than I would have wanted to go out in, and uh, um, and wind stronger, far stronger. Had I given been given the choice, but we so have found that really our our tact. I, I think our tactics are reduce sail and heave to. And heave to. Reduce sail until the, the boat is you know laboring and you're not comfortable with continuing, if you're no longer comfortable continuing to sail, heave too. And that's, we do that yeah. a lot. Because it's just a whole lot more comfortable. And I mean, You don't have to put up with that. No, you don't have to put up with that. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, is any gonna be a, anybody going to be upset if you're a day late? No. Well, no. Or two days or ten only, days or only if 30 you're days. You know. Only... <laughs> Only if you're on a cruise line, and we're not. So we're we don't not have you don't have a schedule to keep. If you have a schedule to keep, uh, beware. That's that's where people run into trouble. It's the same it's the same thing that kills pilots. Uh, get their itis. Get their itis. Uh, get their itis, <laughs> or a rigid schedule where you proceed yeah. when you know you shouldn't. Yeah. Well, I think another thing that kind of has stopped mm -hmm. us and slowed us down is that we don't have the ability to carry so much fuel that we can just plow on through that stuff. We've learned that we have to slow down and just deal yeah, with it. Yeah, but the boat will only do five knots and in flat, calm conditions. Yeah, and if you've got a 20-knot headwind and you're bucking against five or seven-foot seas, you don't go anywhere You're not going fast. anywhere. So Heave to, sit it out, relax, go down below, make some hot chocolate and some chocolate chip cookies, and, <laughs> and it's all good. Yeah, now that... <laughs> Uh, now that you mention it, is something that um, speaks to our basic philosophy of going places. Uh, you can't do that in these narrow passages here in Alaska. You just, you know, sit tight in harbor when the storms are blowing out there and don't try to go anywhere. 
you need to be far enough offshore when you heave to that you're not going to get blown up on the rocks. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's why we prefer when passage making to get as far off offshore as well, possible. Well, that's I think one of the reasons we enjoy long distance passages more is because we can not worry about hitting Less things. Less stress. <laughs> Hope that answers your questions. Yeah. And oh, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan wanted to know if we bounce around a lot in the storms. Um, do we use a drogue or any of that kind of stuff? No. The only storm tactic we use is heaving to. I mean, heave to. We've been in some pretty gnarly conditions like that. Uh, it's worked fine for us, and you don't bounce around. Well, we have got knocked around a little bit. We got knocked around every once in a while. A wave will break against the boat and you know, slap it. But for the most part, uh, in a storm like that, the ride is pretty smooth when you're hove to. You're not really being thrown around a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, it's co certainly calm enough to sit below and, and you know, drink tea and uh, read a book. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Yep. I think a couple of times we've kind of joked that it's almost, we couldn't tell the difference if we were out like at sitting sea at the or dock. tied up at the dock. So. Yeah. It's heaving too is a wonderful thing, and it's a great way to be able to relax when you're tired. Yeah, if you just want to break, you know, if you just want to rest. Well, that's where things happen is people get tired and they're in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Those are two really bad things to let happen. So, cruising, cruising. Yeah, on a no. Sunday after. No, that's grooving. Oh, it's way before your time. Way before your time. Don't even <laughs> pretend. Don't even pretend, Don't even pretend to know that song. <laughs> under our bright orange storm jib, which I don't know if you can see, probably not. And it's been like this for, what is this, the third day now? It's been like this for three days and no end in sight. The weather report is uh, going to be like this for two or three more days at least. You know, we are hove to at the 50 miles out of uh, the Strait of Juan de Fuca. In constant contact with Tofino traffic who's uh, helping us keep out of the way of the ships that are coming in. Our AIS receiver tells us where they are and how close they're going to pass to us. But there's not a whole lot we can do with this. Except wait. That's what we're doing. On our, what is it, fifth day. Oh, by the way, today's our anniversary. Happy anniversary, honey. I'm taking you out for dinner next year, that's right. Okay, well, that's about all.